Jennifer Lopez's new documentary is getting some mixed reviews, some believing she exposed too much of her personal life with Ben Affleck. First off, we see Ben talk about how he felt exposed after Jennifer shared a private book of their emails and letters. 20 years ago, I fell in love with the love of my life, and during that time, I was making an album called This Is Me Then. Lopez is heard telling a crowd in the documentary. I hadn't made an album since then. Years later, we got back together, and I was very very inspired. The inspiration came after her quote Bible she calls it, which was the book Affleck gave her on their first Christmas together. It is every letter and every email that we wrote to each other from 20 years ago to today, she says, sharing that he titled the quote Bible, The Greatest Love Story Never Told by Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck, 2001 to 2021 and counting. Lopez placed the book in the studio and let her collaborators go through it for song inspiration. To Ben's surprise, Ben appears shocked and surprised to find out that Lopez shared this private book he gave her with everyone in the studio. When when talking to the artist working with Jennifer Lopez, Affleck discovers that they gave him a nickname. I was like, you've been showing all the musicians these letters, Affleck says in the documentary, and they were like, yeah, we call you Pen Affleck. And I was like, oh my god. In the documentary, we also learned that Ben had some serious reservations of his love story being shared so publicly. I did really find the beauty and the poetry and the irony in the fact that it's the greatest love story never told, he tells the cameras. And if you're making a record about it, that seems kind of like you're telling it. In another scene, Affleck expresses how it was an adjustment for him to have her share their private life with the entire world. Jen was really inspired by this experience, which is how artists do their work, he says. I certainly do the same things, but things that are private, I have always felt are sacred and special because in part, they're private. So this was something of an adjustment for me. Ultimately, Ben comes to terms with Lopez's project after realizing it's not all about their relationship. I don't really love being in the making of a documentary about my personal life, which is why I'm so relieved that I'm not really, well, it seems like I might be in this, but I'm not really. He he says, I was worrying for no reason. The movie wasn't about me. It was about the ability to love yourself, and that love story is a lot effing harder to find than Prince Charming. Next, we learned Ben had to make compromises when they got back together. Getting back together, I said, listen, one of the things I don't want is a relationship on social media, Ben says. Then I sort of realized it's not a fair thing to ask her. It's sort of like, you're gonna marry a boat captain, and you're like, well, I don't like the water. He added, We're just two people with kind of different approaches trying to learn to compromise. Next, we learned in the documentary that some A-list stars declined to be in the movie musical about her life that accompanies the documentary. In the documentary, Lopez reveals Anthony Ramos, the In the Heights star, was offered the role of her significant other in the rebound scene of the movie. The movie. He was going to do the rebound number with me and the glass house, she tells wardrobe supervisor Sean Barton during rehearsals, and he was like, uh, I'm friends with Mark Anthony. Lopez was married to Mark Anthony from 2000 to 2014, and the pair share 16-year-old twins. The rebound scene that Anthony was supposed to be in shows Lopez in a toxic relationship with a drunken partner. The singer, however, never specifically mentions who the song and scene is about. We also see Jennifer crying about a past relationship and how it negatively impacted her self-esteem. She gets emotional as she recalls a relationship in which she says she was, quote, manhandled before she hit rock bottom and realized it was time to get out. Though she doesn't name the ex, singer and actress speaks candidly through tears about the experience and how it affected her going forward. Being thrown around and manhandled is not fun, she explains. I was never in a relationship where I got beat up, thank God, but I've definitely been manhandled in a couple of other unsavory things. Jen doesn't reveal who treated her that way, but her long career in showbiz has involved plenty of high-profile relationship in addition to her marriage now to Ben Affleck. Jennifer shares more about her past toxic relationships by saying, quote, there were people in my life who said I loved you and then didn't do things that were kind of in line with the word love. You have to hit rock bottom where you're in situations that are so uncomfortable and so painful that you finally go, I don't want this anymore. A therapist said to me, what if this was your daughter? What would you do? And it was so clear. She called. I was like, I tell her, get out of there and never look back. But for me, it was so clouded and so complicated with so much of my past and my 
own pain and hurt and dysfunction that I couldn't see clearly. It was like looking through fog. Jane Fonda had some honest words with Jennifer in the documentary while on a phone call with her. I want you to know that I don't entirely know why, but I feel invested in you and Ben, and I really, really, really want this to work, tells Jen of Ben Affleck on a call filmed for the documentary. However, this is my concern. Like, it feels too much like you're trying to prove something instead of just living it. You know, either every other photograph is kissing and the two of you hugging. Jennifer shrugs it off and laughs, though. That's just us living our life, says. But Jane Fonda did have a point, and if Jennifer listened to her, it may have saved her from receiving horrendous reviews online after the after both movies came out. After both movies came out. Some saying the movie musical is the worst movie ever made. One reviewer made a list called The Reasons Why This Sucked. I had no idea what was going on in the movie. There was no theme. Actually, there were too many themes. There were so many talented artists who were used more as props. They should have had bigger roles. This movie seems like an ode to herself for nailing down a man. It's not really about love. It's a movie about conquering a man. It's basically telling everybody that other relationships that her and Ben had were just filler until they could be together again. Her kids and Ben's kids are going to be watching this. Do they really need to know how much she loves making love to her to their dad? We all know it's not her voice singing those songs, and if it is, auto-tune should get a lot of credit, the reviewer says. The reviewer finishes off by saying she's narcissistic, way too in love with herself, and for people clicking more than two stars, did you actually watch it? Or are you just clicking on five stars because you love this ego maniac? Thoughts in the documentary on former co-star Jane Fonda's phone call saying, Jane is still very protective of her and felt like you're putting yourself out there to get beat up again. Jane Fonda's concerns resurfaced when she thinks about photos of the couple at the Grammy Awards in which Ben Affleck's disinterested expression became the target of memes galore and gossips about and gossip about Jen and gossip about the pair's relationship. I get real scared, you know, with all that about the Grammys and he looks unhappy and I'm like, oh my god, what's happening? Vonda told Jennifer, nothing. Fly. Jennifer Lopez also revealed she got multiple no thank yous from more fellow celebs that she hoped would appear with her in the movie. Taylor Swift, whom Jennifer joined on stage during Taylor's Red Tour 2013, declined, according to today.com. Jason Momoa, Jennifer Coolidge, Lizzo, Vanessa Hudgens, Ariana Grande, and Snoop Dogg also allegedly declined. Khloe Kardashian was another potential celebrity cameo who dropped out. I don't want to force anybody to this who go, it's gonna be fine, for says in the film. Nobody wants to say no to me, Benny. I get that, she tells her manager, Benny Medina. But when an actor doesn't like a script good enough or is worried about it, that is what they'll say. Jennifer, who ultimately put $20 million of her own money in visual album also admits in the film that the whole project made her nervous too. People are scared, scared to put out there. I get it, she says. Took me a long time. I'm scared. I don't act like I'm scared. That's the secret to my whole effing career. Looking back on her childhood, Lopez also reveals that she felt very ignored by her dad and that her mother was always the center of attention. She got used to being around people who acted that way. Jen felt emotionally neglected as a child, Ben Affleck says. He continued continues drawing parallels between her longing for approval and his own past struggles with alcoholism. It's a hard thing to look at somebody whose professional life is wildly successful and who on Instagram looks like they're living the happiest life in the world. The thing you discover is there isn't enough alcohol in all the liquor stores in the world to fill up that thing. In Jennifer's case, I don't think there's enough followers or movies or records or any of that stuff. Part of you still feels a longing and pain. Ultimately, that's the work that you gotta do on your own. That's it for today's video, guys. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more celebrity.